Commonwealth Games is like... Mm. It's a one-off thing or so, right? It's not like yeah. it's repeatable. Like, four years later, you have the same thing. Unless they are, if they really want to prove their metal has like a sports hub, right? Yeah. Maybe the end goal is like the World Cup or something. I don't, I don't know. But World Cup, mm-hmm. I think, is impossible in Singapore. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah or right. maybe, maybe to prove your metal, we do six Commonwealth Games in a row, right? It's for the next 24 years. <laughs> we'll host like six Commonwealth that, Games. That's Edwin Tong's legacy. Uh. <laughs> we'll become the Commonwealth nation. Uh. He's, he thinks in six packs. Uh. Everything is coming in six <laughs> yeah. packs. Can do six times or not? Cannot? Then shut the fuck up. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Yala. Ba, 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 ba. Your thrice weekly podcast where we talk about the hottest news with a touch of what? There it's good old humor. Good old humor, man. Yeah. What's up, man? How yeah. how's 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 the weekend, man? It's been crazy hot, huh? The yeah, weekend was a, insane, man. It has like heat waves, like heat waves. Uh. Yeah, it was, man. And I mean, like it. I think it still hasn't settled in for me that we are back to that sort of weather. Mm. But every time I step out, I'm like, oh shit, yeah. It has been just hot the whole time. Mm. The change was faster. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I mean, they say now is the rest of March is going to top like 35 degrees or so. Yeah, and it, I remember it feels like 37 when you're oh, outside. It? And yeah, based on Apple. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah Apple yeah. weather. Because yeah. I mean, it really is, you wait at a traffic light also, it's like, whoo, it's like burning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I was out, I was out and about this weekend. Mm. I, I was checking out the car-free Sunday thing mm. in town. Um, yeah, a lot of cyclists all baking themselves out there so but how was it was there a festive mood um so basically you know that road between the padang and the national gallery yeah that place was closed off only that like where else uh along esplanade drive like uh. outside the esplanade that that stretch a part of it was closed off uh. Mm. Uh, but it was a lot of cyclists uh. i mean it is car free sunday so uh, i was but i think my mistake was expecting it to be like uh walkable walkable but I think with so many cyclists, it was like maybe even more dangerous than when, when there were oh, cars. Oh, really? Yeah. Because cars got traffic lights. But on there the was no thing. like like lane for cyclists and like uh, pedestrians and all. No, no, it was my worst nightmare. You can imagine cyclists <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, no traffic lights. And then if cyclists hits you, like what happens? But again, these are not like spandex warriors. Lah. These are like families. I saw bikes. one photo of a guy with that old school bike. You know, the one with the big wheel in front. and a called small the, wheel penny, the penny far thing. Ah, penny yeah, far thing. Yeah. And he was dressed up to the nines. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, I saw that. Like, saw like, that. like a white dude like doing it, like, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, it was a... Uh, yeah, interesting. Like, so it was very, it, I mean, reports say like a thousand people, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a thousand bit, people a doesn't people. sound that many for that big an area. But so many bicycles. But I mean, imagine how many of them were on bicycles, you see. Like what, half, ah? Probably, at least. I mean, the actually pedestrians weren't as many as I imagined there would be, uh, mm. to be honest. Was so, it like a loop or just like two two roads? So, you know, the Esplanade Drive, you can cross the bridge, then uh. comes to the Padang, and then then just down the Padang yeah, 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 along the yeah. National Gallery. Yeah. So, yeah, the area, you can just cycle back and forth around the area. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you can also get there via PCN. I guess the park connector network. There was still like a festive mood, lah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, anytime there's closed off roads, I think mm, it's cool. It's nice, lah. It's just that I wish someone told me that if if you weren't going there, uh, if you're not going there with a bicycle, then you basically yeah, la, You are the, like the second class citizen on the road there, lah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not that I'm angry with it. I mean, this you're everyone's angry, right. You're it's car free la. Sunday, but I did not expect it to become cyclist Sunday, la. <laughs> It went from car free Sunday to cyclist Sunday. And like mm. even less like traffic. So now you want a pedestrian Sunday, la. No, no, no cars, no wheels, la. No wheels. I think like, free Sunday. No, like what you said, la. Maybe a bit more uh, delineate uh, where cyclists yeah, should be and yeah. where the pedestrian should be. Because I was thinking the fun part would be like you can walk on a road. For some, mm. it's such a it's such a simple joy. But just yeah, being able to walk on a road and not worry about traffic, right? Yeah, yeah. It's so fun, this one la. you walk, on the, you can walk on the road, la, And then everyone's ringing the bell at you, like ring, 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 get out of the way, lor. Uh, yeah. So after a while, it gets really. So then after that, you walk on the pavement. After that, I left. Uh, yeah, I just walked into the pavement or enter another building or something. But yeah, I mean, there were a lot of people on bikes, you know. the, the I, I think the typical overweight uncle on Brompton bicycle. Mm. There's a, a very a huge representation of that kind of people there. Mm. Uh, then there was that white dude on the penny farthing, yeah. which is like, you know, it's like a 
Colonial master doing colonial master <laughs> yeah, things. Like. Overlooking <laughs> over everyone, like, right? Because it's a fucking high seat, yeah, right? Yeah, the big head and everything. The yeah, big yeah. head. I have, yeah, I don't, don't even think he was like officially there to perform or anything. He was just, just there. No, once I saw it outside my house. Oh, really? Along like uh, the road, like um, it, just some dude just r- r- riding on his penny farting. Like to his plantation or something. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Just like it <laughs> no, was... No, but was he dressed up like the no, whole... Oh, no, no, no. Okay, just okay, a okay, random just, dude. Yeah, yeah. I was like, what the hell? And I mean, I, I don't live in like some secluded area and there's one main road in front mm. and he was just cycling on the pavement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I saw people on unicycles like like the p- typical Singaporean kind of people so lah. Mm. But they weren't dressed up like, like you know, in that Colonial, way, like. yeah, yeah, yeah. Colonially yeah. lah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Yeah, you could say he looks like he's from a circus as well, like, yeah, as much yeah. as you can say, like, English colonial master. Yeah. But it was just funny because, yeah, it was just, like, out of nowhere, like, you know. Yeah. And in that heat, he was dressed up in a yeah, suit and everything in that yeah. heat as well, yeah. That's true. Oh, but okay, la, at least Dedication. Got up. Dedication mm. to his craft. Eh. Yeah, yeah, I I went to uh, Disney on Ice. Oh, yeah. Wow, the opposite. Eh? Like, one, mine was so hot. Yeah, so mine cool. was uh, Disney on Ice. Brilliant. Uh, I mean, just not like something that I wanted to go, but uh, I just ended up there with my wife and her friend and her friend's kid. Yeah. Uh, and, wow, the Disney machine. Eh? Mm-hmm. It's 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 in, in crazy, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is crazy to watch. And, like, the way they... Like, you've been to Disney on Ice? Mm, when I was a kid. Uh, I yeah. never even went as a kid. And, and as an adult, it's even more boring, man. Mm. Uh, like, uh, and, and you know, they're like, all the, it's such a brilliant production because all the lines and all are pre-recorded. Yeah. So everyone down there is just like, you know, do it, going skating, uh, skating and like acting like they're talking and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and some performances were nice, like, but I, at, by the end of it, I didn't even know that there was a story across the whole thing. I thought it was just like a, 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 a Com- like just songs from the movies after another, but there was a story uh, Okay, but yeah, it was a uh, it was insane lah. The, the Disney machine. Wow, you sound like the worst person to go and watch this. Yeah, yeah I'm not the best person to go. <laughs> I'm not the, best. the worst company. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, people, kids just and trying to enjoy I Disney mean, okay, princess stories, kids, and then there you are telling oh production value and all these things. I mean, okay, kids, you know, I do, I like, I guess for kids it has to be fun lah because they don't know any better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you've just, been, oh. you've been fucked by the Disney machine that's why you're like you're like whatever right is it? I don't know man it's it just it's just like you watch it you're like wow this is a it's a machine like, it's a machine it is, uh, it is a Disney yeah. machine and it's a very powerful machine like. I mean I went for a Disney thing recently about the mm. immersive thing mm. I, I enjoyed it yeah I enjoyed mm. it I mean granted I went there with kids also like, but uh yeah, I thought it was an interesting experience. I was hoping to enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. Just not my not my cup of tea. Maybe the immersive one I might enjoy more. Maybe I'm just a Grinch. La. Yeah. So the athleticism, the athleticism of the oh, that was, performance. That was, that was that, nice. You, yeah, you kind of enjoy but it. But the now. athleticism doesn't come across that often. Oh. Okay. Like when there was, I really loved it. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. the acro, acrobats and all with the, like the ones that hang from the cloth from yeah. the, I don't know, I don't know what it's called. Then like some of the skaters, yeah, like power la. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. wondering, oh, I want are these skaters like did they dream of becoming like an ice skating champion? Mm, mm, it didn't work out, mm, and then now they're doing this. Yeah, how do they feel? Yeah, so those are the kind of questions I was asking myself. La. It's the kind of things people probably ask you about podcasts or something. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> just sit here, you talk on the microphone. You don't know who if, yeah. if anyone even you want cares. To be a stand-up comic. How to make money? Yeah. yeah how to make do you money. really? Is that really what you wanted to do? I mean, I can't blame them if they ask. Like, I can't blame them if they if they're thinking that. La. No, but I guess that's that begs the question. Then why aren't you more empathetic to to? I never say I'm not doing? empathetic. I'm like, I yeah, but me... you just bitch about them, like, That's all, lah. <laughs> <laughs> I when did I bitch about them? I'm bitching about Disney. Oh, it's the quality. Very okay, big okay. difference between the corporation and the individuals. Like I yeah, respect yeah. all of them so much. Okay, okay. The fact that they're bringing so much joy to kids. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Terrence, I have a heart, man. Okay, like, you're not the target market, la, right? That's I'm not the target sure. market. Yeah, but yeah, I, like yeah. Disney on Ice is never targeting the parents, right? Yeah, yeah, kind of. Right. But it's a family thing, lah. Yeah, it's a family thing, lah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's meant to not say target the parents, it's you're meant to enjoy all together. As true, a family. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. The uh, popcorn chicken was very nice, lah. Uh, that was you bought it inside, lah. Yeah, I bought it inside. Okay, okay. So it was expensive popcorn chicken, lah. Shape in the shape of a mouse or something? No. Oh no, it's just shaped like a like what you expect popcorn chicken to be okay, shaped okay, like. Okay, okay. Not like Donald Duck shape. No, no, no. I don't know. Maybe it was maybe it was, but it was dark. Yeah. <laughs> I was just fucking eating the popcorn chicken. You're just like bitching about it, <laughs> frowning and everything. You're the Grinch, man. Grinch. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it was it was a it was an interesting experience. Lah. Okay, okay. 
interesting. At least it was cool. Like. It wasn't like it's, it's not hot. Uh. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't hot. It wasn't hot. Mm, okay. Uh, but I mean, it, you see there, you go there, you see all the staff, the security. I think they are really getting into the groove of like they understand how to host big events. Uh. Correct. Uh, and wow, what a great segue into uh, like, what uh, we're even discussing. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. I mean, yeah, actually, yeah, I see everyone. We, there was a whole purpose to what we were just talking exactly. about. Exactly. Hosting of big yes. events in Singapore. If you were listening, wondering what the fuck are these two people <laughs> talking about when you want to hear about the news, hold your horses, man. Yeah. Hold your horses. That is, that is why... That's why we do what we do. Exactly. Right? That's why we're experts. <laughs> Don't question why we do what we do. Yeah, yeah, and what we actually wanted to do before we started doing this. Yeah. Uh, but yes, before we jump into that, uh, what is the thing we normally plug, Terence? Uh, if you're new new here, especially on Instagram or, or another one of our social media platforms like TikTok or what, uh, welcome, and uh, we hope you subscribe. If this brings any, it brings you any value or joy, or at least tell one other person and do something offline. Tell someone about it, lah, right? Mm, mm, mm. Uh, that, that, I think that's always a very fresh thing in today's society. Like when someone gives you an actual recommendation, yeah. like word of mouth. Lah, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and if you want to find out more about other things we do, like the shows we've done, uh, Folklory, Ministry of Funny, if you want to work with us, you can always reach out and find out all the info at ministryoffunny.com, mm. our mm. website, where you can also sign up for our newsletter, uh, where we will email if we have something cool to share. Yeah. Cool. All right. Awesome. So, as mentioned, let's jump right into that first topic. Jump right into it. Singapore, can we host these big events, like, right? That was yeah, what we're man. talking about. Yeah, because uh, last week on 14th March, uh, it became public knowledge that Singapore is actually assessing the feas- feasibility of hosting the 2026 Commonwealth Games. Mm. And like, um, at first I thought it was just, oh, uh, yeah, the bid is coming up and all. But the more you dig into it, the more, yeah, it's not... That's straightforward uh, in terms of um, the w- whether or not this is a good idea. And it's quite, there's been a lot of hiccups along the way already like, yeah. for these games in particular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but like, you know, for you, like, do you, you got any emotional connection to the Commonwealth Games? Uh, no, I mean, I always hear, you always hear about it here yeah. and there. But it's never one of the marquee kind of like events that everyone like looks forward to, like sea games. Or Asian games. Do you think Sea Olympics? Games has more, or like even Asian games has more, like uh, how you say, uh, impact than Commonwealth games? I mean, at least at the Sea Games and Asian games, there's always like some big competition, football or something like that, where we play against our neighbors, like right, Malaysia or, or yeah. Vietnam or Thailand or something. So there's always a little bit of buzz around those, like those team team events. Uh, whereas Commonwealth Games, yeah, you don't. I, I mean, I don't remember. There's no football very, very much. Uh, I'm not sure actually, but there might be. But but it's not a big deal, uh, right? Like the fact that we're here talking about it. And do you remember the last time Singapore played in the Commonwealth Games or football match or anything like that? Uh? I actually feel the opposite. Like I feel How's Commonwealth it? Games. There's almost like not as much as you don't hear about it as much. But when mm-hmm. it's actually happening, right? Yeah. There's a bit more or global kind of feeling. Is it? Yeah, because like South Asian games and Asian games, yeah, yeah, you're competing. You hear the the you look at the lineup. It's all yeah, like, contained within Asia. Like. Yeah, yeah. But Commonwealth Games, hundred meter final, whatever, you see people from across the Commonwealth, which means across continents. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I find interesting. That's yeah. why I feel like there's a bit more of a global kind of. It's like the middle child, like, you know, uh, uh. that is easy to forget, but got some substance there also, like. But but the origins of the Commonwealth Games. Oh yeah, is, that one is like yeah. Like, it's like the all the former colonies, right? Correct, correct. The yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe it's your like the same reason you enjoy seeing the penny farthing bicycle going around. My you know, hero worship <laughs> of, the, of, the, of the white. The, the new white colonial movie. colonial mindset, like, like yeah, oh yeah. you know, we brought all of us together. It's so beautiful, you know, we're from <laughs> different continents, different countries, <laughs> but we're all commonly wealthy here together, united. That's why you like it so, so much. So then, right? are you feeling it's <laughs> underwhelming because of the history or because of what you feel now? Or because of what you feel now is affected by the history? I would say the history doesn't help, right? Yeah, like, the history like, doesn't help. You look at it, you're like, why there's are we no here reason, again? Yeah, yeah, why no, are we here again? <laughs> yeah, there's no geographical <laughs> reason why we should all be competing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's no reason other than to to build up this image of like, the Commonwealth. Commonwealth where everyone has prospered under yeah. the under the guidance of the colonial empire. Yeah, when you break up the word Commonwealth also. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Really? Is it common? Yeah. Is it common? <laughs> is it well common across the Commonwealth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, mm. uh, in fact, that, that has bled into the problems that it's facing today also, like, right? Mm. Where, where not that many uh, countries are super keen, or at least they are not super keen to host it, like, right? Yeah. 
uh, and 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 like just to give some context. So basically, if you think about it, twenty twenty six, right, uh, mm. is the Commonwealth Games around March, I believe. And it was only last November when the Commonwealth uh, Federation, the Com- Commonwealth Games Federation, the CGF, kind of invited countries in the Commonwealth to express interest. Like. That is because the original host, mm-hmm. that was Victoria, uh, who agreed to host it, uh, I think in 2022, towards mm-hmm. the end, last year, October, they pulled out because of ballooning costs. Yeah. Yeah, so when you go back into even the the history of like the Commonwealth Games 2026, so basically it was kind of like a domino effect. Uh, For the 2022 games, Mm. it was meant to be in Durban, the South African city. Mm -hmm. And 2015, they won the rights. So seven years ahead. But 2017, they got stripped of the rights due to financial concerns. Mm -hmm. So Birmingham, which was supposed to host in 2026, got pushed to uh, up to host 2022. Mm. Uh, which meant that 2026 there was no host yeah. uh, and um, uh, there, there were bids actually from KL, Cardiff, Calgary, uh, Calgary, Edmonton, Adelaide all withdrawn due to costs mm. um, and that um, yeah, yeah, like, like that, that thing was left as a void like. then in January 2022 Victoria announced they were going to give a serious consideration they, they accepted later in 2022 I think April 2022 then one year later they pulled out like. Mm. And right now, they might be having to pay 300 Australian million wow. as a, 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 a... Breaking like a, the contract. Yeah, for a contract. But I mean, to them, it still made sense because like, apparently, it went up from 2.4 billion to about 6 billion, mm. uh, which is a crazy amount. Like. Yeah. So, when I heard this, I was like, oh, because at first, I was thinking objectively, maybe there is good reason for us to consider. Yeah. But then you look at everyone pulling out because of the cost yeah, that that changes the context, lah. I think uh, we, yeah, Gold Coast also looked at stepping mm-hmm. in after Victoria pulled out and then decided not to, mm. saying that there was no support from state or federal governments, lah, in terms mm-hmm. of funding. Yeah. So now, yeah, there's a bag being hoisted, a foisted around the region, and I think Singapore and Malaysia are both considering mm. taking up the bag, lah, at a very high cost based on what the budget is, mm. and with a very short timeline, lah, like it's literally. Uh yeah, two years two years away lah, right? Yeah. Uh, for to host a very, a big series of games huh? Yeah. Um, but what have you seen that that makes you made you say that that uh, yeah, people are concerned about the cost and all that. Uh, you mean for other countries? Yeah, in in Singapore, and Singapore. Yeah. Uh, I mean Singapore actually. I mean online you see some chatter. Uh, but mm. um. Nothing too conclusive. Yeah. It was just my own thinking. Like, is this the best thing to host? I thought you liked it. Like you said you said you, you find it like somewhere between Olympics and Asian Games. Yeah. Means you, mean... think is, you, think, you think Commonwealth better than Asian. Nah, that's what you're saying. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. No, anyhow like that. Huh? No, it's nice to watch it, but yeah. your country hosting it, two very different things, Terrence. Mm, mm. Uh, like sometimes, oh, it's nice to host the gala, or nice to attend the gala or some shit. Like, you want to organize it yourself? Fuck no. It's nice to go to uh, someone's party. La. Yeah, to I like going to other itself. people's weddings. <laughs> Did I like to organize my own wedding? <laughs> Debatable, you know? Debatable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Debatable. So this is the same thing here. Yeah. So that was where I was coming from. Mm. And in the sense like, because I was looking also at Birmingham, I think Birmingham, it came out to about 980 million pounds. Yeah. Um, and if you read articles, yeah, the residents, you know, look back at it fondly. Mm. But I think they were kind of bankrupted Bankrupt, uh, slightly by it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slightly. I mean, yeah, like bankrupted, right? Yeah, because when I was looking bankrupt, bankrupted, like, mm. I don't know how bankrupt. I mean, the city is still running. Yeah. Uh, they also got certain funding from the the, the English government. Mm. So it wasn't just the... the there's Birmingham that fronted it. Yeah. But it felt like, yeah, they were talking about abandoned building sites and all that. So when you look at it, like, mm, is this really the best idea for us to organize? Yeah. Like for you? I mean, uh, you look at our experience with the Youth Olympic Games mm. back in the day as well. Yeah. I can't remember the exact figures, but also blew the budget, right? Ballooned beyond what we had planned. And uh, even till today, still got there's still political ramifications for Vivian Balakrishnan, right, mm, who was mm. in charge of it at that point, mm. right? Yeah. Like he still, people still bring it up and still talk about it and in not in a, not in a, not with fond memories, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a real discussion on whether like hosting such a, this kind of event necessarily is a good thing for Singapore, versus 
F1 or versus Taylor Swift, for example. Mm. Like, does hosting this Commonwealth? The, the, how, how do you feel about that? Does that excite you if you know that? Or uh, maybe if I can go around and watch oh, yeah, yeah. Like I Commonwealth mean, games? Hosting it would be awesome, like, as a spectator. Mm. But I don't think it's the best thing for our country to do. Why, yeah? Uh, because what about inspiring the youth huh? you don't inspire the youth yeah but let me finish oh, my okay, fucking okay, thought okay. Like, <laughs> basically like right now I think what they're doing uh, in terms of organizing global sporting events that yeah. are on a single spot basis right is yeah. maybe the best thing like. mm. I think this past weekend we had the Singapore Smash yes, yes. which was a badminton tournament yes. uh, right? next year we are going to be the first Asian country to organize the World Aquatics Championship yeah. uh, which I at first I thought hey like is this some, some offshoot thing but it's actually FINA which yeah. has been renamed like, to the World Aquatics Association swimming la, right swimming, swimming. No, it's only, not only swimming it's swimming diving artistic swimming and water polo oh, okay. so okay. it's aquatics you know aquatics yeah, yeah uh, and it's uh uh, aquatics la. yeah, uh, yeah uh, aquatics um, so that feels like, oh you know it's contained mm. we are slowly building up our expertise has like a, a, a aquatics hub yeah. then I think in 2022 they also bid to hold the world athletics championship yeah. but we lost out to Tokyo okay. uh, so so it feels like okay we are still like yes we want to be an entertainment and sporting hub but I think a games it's going to be super expensive la. Mm. Uh, mm. and I think I think maybe it's not it's like going zero to hundred a bit too fast uh. mm, mm. Uh, so that's what I feel but of course if they do organize it they can somehow manage to make the economics of it work I think as a spectator it'll be great uh. but isn't the question is the question really about can we afford it or can we afford not to host it uh? you know not like to host it uh. if we don't host it and then say Malaysia hosts it mm. and then the eyes of the commonwealth are on Malaysia mm. and they get all the eyeballs that that we covered so much, right? Mm. Like how everyone was staring at Singapore last two weeks ago, like mm, Taylor Swift was here. Mm. Um, you think there's something we can we can deal with the aftermath? I think can. Uh. You think, I think so? Can. Because at the end of it, yes, you get all the eyeballs, but if net net you are spending a lot more than it is bringing in, yeah, then it doesn't sound like the best thing to do, la. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but like for, for you, um, uh, I mean, probably the example you you and I are old enough to remember the Youth Olympic Games. Mm. When they were in town, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah, there was a buzz in the air. You know, like it was cool that you could go to a neighborhood stadium and 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 watch like some obscure sport or like, you know fencing or whatever mm. at a very high level, right? And uh, I guess for the athletes living in Singapore and all, it was quite inspiring too, right? Mm. Uh. But ultimately, what what are the long term things that come out of it, like, Right? Do you remember anything that in particular that like? Yeah, that was a sporting moment. That was a milestone in Singapore sporting history. I remember the mountain biking trail at Tampines, uh-huh. which was made for the Youth Olympics Games, was super cool. And where is it now? I think it just uh, for hit BTO. <laughs> 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 My point exactly. <laughs> While it was there, I remember going out. I was like, oh shit, there's this kind of mountain biking trail. Not not that I mountain bike, I actually ran along the pathways and all. Yeah, okay. And it was it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but then after that, I realized it, I found out it was cleared. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean that that kind of illustrates the point, lah. Right, that mm. you do these things, there's buzz, but after that, there's like what what are the lingering uh, effects of it, lah. So right? like Taylor Swift was the lingering thing. Was the lingering effects? that people want to come back and do it again. Lah. You know, do mm. the whole concerts in the region again. Everyone's, uh, last week, people, you know, were praising our whole public transport system for how it handled everything. Yeah. And I think like what you said, the staff now, they're so accustomed to... Hope. They're like Disney on ice, yeah. please. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know? Easy. Yeah, 360,000 yeah. people, yeah, did it last week, you know. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that one I can see, you know... Uh, Actually, like, it brings our sports hub from, you know, zero to 100 pretty fast, like, right? Mm. Whereas this one is, like, when you, I think the thing about games is that when you bring the games over, you're not just bringing the popular sports. You also bring the the sports that very few people actually play. Maybe mm. some, maybe in Singapore. Like what? Don't like what, like what? Uh, I mean, I don't know. Like, even, like, like shooting or stuff like that, uh. like, right? You know, shooting, uh, what was it called? Like, like marksmanship. Like, what's the sport called? Air rifle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or one of those shooting Or the clay, sports, right? clay, that one. Uh. It's one of those, I mean, Singapore actually has champions in those areas, but yeah. it's very few people who actually play it, right? Mm. But you have, still have to coordinate everything for it and, and, and all. Mm. So it's a, yeah, like you ended up, you probably end up like, um, 
like your mountain biking course, building building facilities that maybe one one off use only lah. Mm. And <clears throat> I think you read about like what happened in in uh, let's say Brazil after they hosted the World Cup lah, right? Mm. A lot of stadiums that uh, left abandoned and not not or not in use lah, right? Yeah. Uh, it's a real strain lah, on the public. Uh, public resources, right, to maintain some of these facilities. Mm. And so maybe they're just better off, like, you know, having building BTOs over them or what. Mm. So it's a lot of cost that goes into these things that don't necessarily, I, I can't see the, even the short term benefit of it. Lah. And then no need to talk about long term. Mm. You know? Sure, it gets you some media coverage on these things, but, you know, one, you know, Taylor Swift or Coldplay concert can also get you a lot of media coverage. Like, as, as Maybe then they do a thing. Like, we do yeah. Taylor Swift, we do Coldplay and all. Yeah. But then we use that to offset the Commonwealth Games cost. And then like, they check, okay, haven't balanced yet. We need to get back like some other global superstar mm. and then balance. But that, then I think that people are asking the question and they're also asking this question in Malaysia, right? Where could their money be better used to do other things? Lah? Like not necessarily diverted to something entirely different like housing or what. But let's say investing in the infrastructure for the local athletes, lah, right? Mm. To train and all. Because mm. if anything we know in Singapore, uh, our local football scene, for example, there's not a lot of places for people to, to train and play football at a very high level, lah, right? Mm. Um, yeah, so maybe could those resources be better used to something else to develop the local scene rather than spending it to host uh, a whole competition. Mm. I think that's what the Australian state of Victoria is doing. They're mm-hmm. saying we're going to use some of the budget that we had to improve the, the sports facilities as well as social housing and hospitals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but then, you think it can be solved by just economics of it, like ticket prices and all that? But the thing is, we don't have a big domestic population yeah, of people to go and watch yeah. buy tickets. That's and I true. mean, you know, yeah, you try to imagine like it, this is not the World Cup or anything where people mm. are going to fly in to watch it like, right it's gonna, only going to be like uh, maybe a few spots they might like, but other than that for the most part people it's not going to have that kind of attention on, on it like. so then what do you think about a uh, co-host with Malaysia ah now that's a more interesting possibility like, yeah. right I think that where you actually because then you split the you know the cost and everything and uh, and then from there you you also find a way to work with Malaysia on it, like, right? Mm. And you you don't you don't you don't you're not like uh sort of held hostage by by the Commonwealth Games Federation itself or what, like, right? Mm. You know that you have a stronger bargaining position because it's two people together, two countries together, like, right? Yeah. Maybe that's a possibility. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be cool. Uh, but I can't mm. imagine it working out politically. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. It's just too it feels like too many things. Like can you imagine they come to Singapore, then they have some fucking shock roti prata, yeah, and yeah. they go to Malaysia. <laughs> then I was like, where's my roti prata? They're like, sorry, we serve roti chana here. Yeah. Then like, what the hell? I had roti prata in Singapore. They're like, you don't want to go back to Singapore? Like. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, so okay. stuff like that. Like. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it could work if there was more time to negotiate and all that. But now it's like two years. Yeah. Because by then the high-speed rail also won't... Uh, wait, what is the status on the high-speed rail in Singapore? I don't think it's any time that soon. Uh, yeah. Is it confirmed green? It's still no, right? moving forward, but but at a, a glacial la. pace, uh, starts and stops. But mm. uh, yeah, you know, I mean, it would require the stars. The the stars need to align for something like that to happen. Uh. Yeah. Uh, in terms of negotiations, not even talking about like the facilities and all that. Just yeah. for both countries to sort of like okay, negotiate. Okay, you take what spot, I take what spot, and and how to how to how do people travel freely between the two countries or so la, mm. Given the you know the causeway issues we have and things like that la. Yeah. Right. I guess it's one of the things like, like, would you say that if before Taylor Swift came, you go up to anyone, like average Singaporean and say, do you think it's a good idea we get Taylor Swift to do six concerts here? Yeah. Generally, most people would say yes. La. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, yeah. Uh, whereas Commonwealth Games is a bit more... Yeah. Maybe, but that's the danger. Maybe Edwin Tong is right. You know, like all his like uh, committee members saying no. He's like, guys, you shut up, okay? Yeah. I brought so in Taylor I Swift. Yeah. 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 This yeah. is a walk in the park. Yeah. You know, this is the next challenge. Mm. Anyone mm. can bring in Taylor Swift, but yeah. to bring in Commonwealth Games and be profitable, that is my next challenge. Yeah. So you all shut up, we're doing Commonwealth Games. Yeah. So if we compare, we're comparing Taylor Swift and Commonwealth Games, like, right? Yeah. But maybe F1 is a is a more closer comparison to Commonwealth Games. Uh, we talked about F1, you know, also it's also not like as mainstream, mainstream a sport as football or anything, like, right? Mm. But it's still a sport that, you know, like, um, that still has a sizable following and uh, they bring in a lot of entertainment alongside the, the race itself, right? So if that, what if something like that is done for the Commonwealth Games? Is that 
you think that 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 makes it any better? Oh, I don't want tricky here because the Commonwealth Games is what well, is like a twelve day thing. Yeah. Whereas yeah. the F one is F one weekend, lah. You know. Yeah. Um, and F one because it's still is only is only just one sport, but that sport already has a lot of associations with like you know the rich and mm-hmm. like the wealthy. You know, mm. whereas sports is almost a bit you if they charge damn expensive for the tickets. Mm. It's go not gonna make sense. Yeah, right? yeah. So the sports is supposed to be accessible, right? Yeah, yeah. So I think very different kind of vibes. Uh. Yeah, 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 that's right. That's very true. That's kind true. Of vibes. So F one tickets itself, really, you know, it's like going to be sold to corporate sponsors and stuff. Yeah, like that. exactly. And there's there's con- a concert as well. Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. they try and get some big name stars. Yeah. Commonwealth Games is like mm, it's a one off thing or so, that right? It's not like yeah. it's repeatable. Like four years later, you have the same thing. Unless they if they really want to prove their metal has like a sports hub, right? Yeah. Maybe the end goal is like the World Cup or something. I don't, I don't know, but World Cup, mm-hmm. I think, is impossible in Singapore. La. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah or right. maybe, maybe to prove your metal, we do six Commonwealth Games in a row. La. It's for the next 24 years. <laughs> we'll host like six Commonwealth that, Games. That's Edwin Tong's legacy. Uh. <laughs> we'll thinks, become the Commonwealth nation. Uh. He's, he thinks in six packs. Uh. Everything is coming in six <laughs> <Yeah>. packs. <laughs> Can do six times or not? Cannot? Then shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, six or nothing. Six or nothing, that's it. Correct, correct, correct. <laughs> yeah. oh, then wow. we'll lock it in for 24 years. Then yeah. we will. Then it, maybe it makes sense to you know build up facilities and all that, right? Economies of scale. Uh. Exactly, exactly. Wow. But that would be like, a, yeah, that would be a Tall ask, la, tall ask. Tall ask, yeah. Six, yeah, because, I mean, the Commonwealth Games Federation, I, I find it quite interesting that after Victoria pulled out, uh, then that's why they, they had like, uh, I think they had a special meeting here in Singapore last, last November, November, right? Last November. Uh, kind of telling, la, right, that after the Victoria pulled out that, then they had this special meeting and in Gold Singapore. Coast also, la, Gold Coast. And Gold Coast also, yeah. 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 Then they had this meeting in Singapore. La. Tells you, yeah, la, they're probably shopping around. They were shopping around for new suitors, la, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's then they, they did offer like a hundred million pound, I think, uh, a grant to yeah. help the, the, the next person who becomes host. La. But that's peanuts compared to what the host has to spend to, to make it happen, la, right? I mean, it's still a decent amount. La. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but... It just looks bad, la, you know? Mm, like, mm. I'm guessing Olympics World Cup, there'll be no shortage of, of suitors, la, right? Yeah. The, that one, you can tell, it's etched in history, la, right? Those those events. Yeah. Commonwealth Games also etched in history. La. Oh, yeah. La. Whose history, la, right? <laughs> the history of the Commonwealth. <laughs> the Commonwealth. Yeah. It's such a nebulous concept, la, the whole Commonwealth thing. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's like too much of that whole uh, monarchy, you know, like the royal yeah. family and all. And, just like, and then okay. now they're having so many problems themselves, Harry and, and Kate. Like Kate, Kate's photo and all this well, things. Well, Harry got new controversy. Yeah. I thought it just Not Kate. Not new controversy, but, but I mean, the last few years, Harry yeah, yeah, and Meghan yeah, yeah. have, have, have been a circle now show. Now it's right? Kate and uh, William. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because exactly. got that supposed uh, alleged affair and all. Yeah, yeah. So, so is that necessarily what you want to be so closely associated to, right? Yeah. So, right. I mean, I'm also seeing some articles saying the Commonwealth Games has ran its course. Mm, mm. You know, is there a need for Commonwealth Games? But, I don't know, as an athlete, right, mm. it's still a games where, I mean, okay, like, the, the timings and all are still world-class, like, right? Mm, the world records and all, right? Yeah. You'll still be competing against world-class athletes. Yeah. So, as an athlete, I can imagine you wanting it to happen, like, mm, especially mm. if you're thinking, because, I mean, I, I can also imagine at least you train like, you know, okay, this year is your Garden for the Olympics, next year is mm. this. And if something is taken out, yeah. Uh, yeah, it disrupts your schedule. Correct, correct, correct. And you also have a very limited window to peak. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as an athlete, I can imagine like they, they want it. Mm. But but the thing about Commonwealth Games, it's not like the, um, the World Cup where the host nation gets like immediate entry into the competition, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the World Cup, that, that that's one benefit of hosting the, the World Cup. Like, you automatically qualify yeah. for the for the for it, right? Yeah. Which otherwise you wouldn't be able to. Right? Whereas this Commonwealth Games, I don't think there's such a thing, right? You wouldn't, they, they, you still have to meet certain standards before you can actually participate in the game. So it's not like our local athletes immediately have a chance to shine on the world stage or whatnot, right? They, they kind of still, la. you still need to train up properly first before you can even try for the games, right? Yeah, la, yeah, la. yeah. So it's a bit you you can't buy your way into the games or so. Yeah. So, so this, is, this is like I mean, for for the Singapore government to say they are assessing the feasibility or something, interesting lah. Because I mean, the way they they orchestrated the Taylor Swift thing, mm-hmm. who knows? Maybe they got something up their sleeve. No? They're like, okay, you fund all the costs, but we will get Taylor Swift to open up the yeah, yeah, games. Yeah. Now yeah. she kaki with us already. Yeah. We got her permanent suite at MBS. Yeah. And she just come and then sell concerts. T- tickets for that 
you you uh, you never know, man. Never know, never know. But I would say this one is like there's political baggage going with these uh, because of youth Olympic games. Mm. Whereas the right. Taylor Swift thing was really like it's unprecedented, lah. Right, a six day concert of the biggest pop star in the world. But twenty twenty six by then the elections finish already. Yeah. Correct, lah. But in the lead up, you, I mean, you want to if you want to announce and everything you oh, yeah, has yeah, been out, right? Now, like, been Which in the right. climate in the climate that we're in of like talking about high cost of living and yeah. what the government is doing and all that. But uh, apparently since uh, the first edition in 1930, the Games has only been held in Asia twice. Yeah. KL in 1998 and New Delhi in 2010. Mm, mm, the rest mm. of the time is UK, Australia, Canada and New Zealand. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, but yeah, Interesting. maybe 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 if Singapore wants to go for another first, uh, that 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 might be the attraction to it. Uh. Oh, Edwin Tong uh, now is like, what's yeah. next, man? What is next? What is next? He's, what he's is on next? adrenaline high now. Yeah. Right? <laughs> he's like, he needs to <laughs> anything top that, else uh. okay. He needs to top Someone that. needs to put, uh, like uh, bring Edwin Tong down to earth. Uh. <laughs> Back down to earth. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so. Um, but yeah. Uh, interesting lah. Uh. Uh, but yeah, speaking of um, you know, uh, putting someone back down to earth, lah, right? There was this bunch of people who were very close to to the ground to earth, uh, but now have have found themselves in the stratosphere of like social media, oh, and having gone like super viral uh, mm. because of something they posted and something that apparently is being mm. investigated also. Lah, and yeah. Who are these group of people? Lah? Yeah. So it was a six. Uh, SES servicemen yeah. uh, who uploaded something on Insta Stories uh, where they were holding their rifles in a forested area mm. with a caption that read uh, Chong Swa N-word. Mm, mm. So, like the definition of Chong Swa, which is a Hokkien word, is rush up a hill. Yeah. But I mean, from my non-Hokkien speaking memory, it is just you, Chong Swa means you go outfield and you just chong, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you just do, whack, yeah, 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 you just whack, like, you do your training and you yeah. give it your all. Like. Yeah. Uh, and then, so, but it's also a noun, like, right? Uh, like, yeah, we're going this for is a my Chong, chong Swa, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. so this, that's what the caption was saying, like, like we are a bunch of Chong Swa, uh, N word lah, but that's not the then Chong Swa is not the noun lah, right? The N word is the noun. Chong Swa is like the activity lah, right? That they do together. Oh yeah lah, it's like yeah, my soccer yeah. khakis. Yeah, yeah yeah exactly yeah. Ah okay 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 uh, yeah. Chong Swa. Yeah, so it's like activity lah, correct? Yeah, 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 it's yeah, an yeah. activity. I mean yeah lah, the noun yeah lah, but yeah, the main noun is that they're describing themselves with the N word lah. Yeah, so it was posted on Instagram on thirteenth March, I believe. Mm. Uh, then it was reshared on X. Uh. And then by 14th March, the post on X was still available, but the user has since made the account private. So it was mm. around like uh, one, two days. La. Yeah. So the MINDEV is investigating. Mm. Um, <laughs> when you saw this, uh, yeah. what came to your mind, Terrence? Um, I guess it's the, you know, people are saying that it's a racial slur and everything, la, right? Mm. Uh, I guess the but here is like, um, I mean, obviously, these guys are kind of stupid for having posted this because that is everyone in the army knows that yeah, you shouldn't be taking photos of of yourself and, and posting. But like, posting them online is even more stupid. And then adding a, a racial slur in your caption is yeah. like levels of stupidity also, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but there are some people in the in like comments and all that who are saying that how is this? Why like would the SAF even? Have noticed this or made a fuss about this, if there wasn't that that racial slur in there, right? Mm. Like, would it even be a big deal? You know, like like um, because I think, but because of this race, racial slur in there, that's why the SAF has no choice but to to look into this, lah. You don't think it is just the posting of the picture, uh, as it is? I mean, that is an offense in some way. Yeah, but I think because of the racial slur with it as well. It has just accelerated the whole process and made it a bigger thing than it usually is, lah. I'm sure there's there's always some idiot who posts who posts photos of, of himself in camp on social media, lah. Yeah, actually, I don't know. Like now, is is it a thing, ah? When when people are in camp, be it as an NSF or NS men, mm-hmm. uh, do people post shit online? Not supposed to, lah. Not yeah. supposed to, lah. Right? Yeah, not supposed to. Still not supposed to. Yeah. And then just want to just put like Chong Swa. Yeah, but we- but yeah, so so people on Reddit are saying like um. Yeah, that 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 N word in particular, right? Uh, is it really considered like a racial slur 
in, in Singapore, Singapore la, right? Con- given that we don't have a very big, uh, you know, African American community or anything like that, right? Right. So why why is this like considered a racial slur, la, right? Mm. When it doesn't particularly target anyone, the group, or any one of the major demographics of people in Singapore, la. Mm. So there's some some of the people are saying like yeah, la, the all these uh, American standards of of uh, importing yeah yeah importing the slow words uh. yeah in, in what, what, what do you that. think uh? huh what do you think I think uh, racial slur is a racial slur la, right regardless of where you where where it's from or, or what it is mm. um so it's definitely not in any not in good taste to use it like regardless of of where you are mm. and uh should not be encouraging young people to use it um uh, but there are arguments against that also like some people say well what do you think when you hear when you hear that i mean just last week or a few weeks before i was in a gathering with uh acquaintances okay uh, and okay. one guy was just like, radio, hey, what's up? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, uh, wait, is that, is that cool? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, should, does he not know that uh, that could be something that uh, people, can, can, I mean, can be offensive? Like? Yeah, yeah. And he was just using it. I was like, hmm, he's an older guy. Yeah. Then I was thinking, uh, wait, did I miss something in the in what is acceptable in Singapore? Like? Because mm-hmm. to me, that is almost like a universally derogatory word. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, la, like, why would you use it? You say universal, but if like a black man is talking to another black man and they use it, yeah, what's up? You know, universal for non-black people, la. Yeah, la. I mean, yeah, yeah. So then yeah. it's not universal already, la. Universal means okay, everyone, true, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, So la. if um, because this is the argument I'm reading, like, is that people are saying that if our uh, if our interaction or understanding of that word comes from how. Uh, you know, black people in the US use that word in rap, in, you know, movies, popular culture. Mm. And so that's our understanding of what that, the word is like, because that's our interaction with that world, right? Yeah. Um, You know, then is it that bad that, that this group, these bunch of young people in Singapore are using it in that context, uh, like talking about themselves as buddies the brotherhood, and friends. Uh, the, the brotherhood, yeah. <laughs> What's up, man? You know, they're not using it in a derogatory way to each other. So does that make it offensive or are we just importing this idea of it oh it's such an offensive thing you know wow right yeah I think that word is almost too loaded right yeah 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 to to ever how you say uh, be seen as a has a harmless word like, used by someone who is not part of the community yeah yeah so in this case I mean okay you can argue it whatever which way. Mm-hmm. But when you post something on social media yeah. where you don't have a chance to add an audio note yeah. together with your Instagram stories explaining why mm. uh, we should not, uh, the you know, it being as a derogatory word is outdated, blah, blah, blah. It's fucking stupid. Mm-hmm. So that's where I feel like when they posted it, right, what world do they live in? Mm. Like the mm. fact that they posted it on social media means they must be aware of social media. Mm. They must be aware of all the things that go on in social media. Maybe they just live in that smaller echo chamber mm, mm, that they are not aware. Yeah. Which boggles my mind also. Yeah. Yeah. So so going back to your question about what I feel like um I think I think it's one of those like the let's say a derogatory word for Indian people killing. Mm, or like mm, for Chinese people what chinks. Or Jackie Chan's. Uh, like Jackie Chan's. Jack, yeah. Jackie Chan's. Me and my Jackie Chan's. Imagine if they, they imagine if like a group of like, you know, uh, people in America. <laughs> <My> Jackie Chan. <laughs> they're, they're, they're not even like, like they're not even like Asian or Chinese or whatever. Yeah. And they're like, me and my Jackie Chan's or me and my Ching Chong friends or something. Like, yeah. You know, me and my that, Chinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chinks. Would that, would that get them in or trouble? Or me and my Kalings. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, exactly, yeah. Would that get, get them in trouble, you know? I can imagine people within their communities who yeah. are of that race yeah. feeling like, hey, guys, you all don't understand this word. Mm. Don't use it. La. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of race, racial violence in the US. La, even yeah. against like Asian people, whether yeah. they're Indian or Chinese or what. Yeah. yeah. So I think I think there would be that sort of same sentiment. La. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And because, but those words are not as as as, as infamous as the yeah. N-word. So I think if it does happen, yeah, I would imagine people in the who understand the context, uh, the people from that race would feel a little outraged. Mm-hmm. Like, would you feel anything if you saw a post in the and not to say that we mm. are saying the the impact of the words is the same throughout because like, yeah, yeah, every yeah. word has different histories different amounts of uh, being a loaded word uh, if you saw like me and my chinks um, I mean definitely in bad taste like, right yeah 
But would I would you know it wouldn't I wouldn't go get outraged over it, right? And maybe but maybe that's an issue of us just getting getting used to or we internalizing uh you know racism like right in in our own in the ways our societies are like right mm. um because I, I think that that uh, if anything uh the last few years of all the black lives matter and everything it's become a much more global issue like right that yeah. people around the world have seen on social media or at least have come across in some ways so yeah i agree that especially young people who are on TikTok all that, they should have heard of yeah. these issues, the issues of using these things. Yeah. Um, but I can't say the same of like other, you know, other races as well, right? Yeah. Racial slurs that are used to other races. So br- broadly, I wouldn't want anyone to use any kind of racial slur against other people. Mm. But maybe there is that possibility that certain racial slurs are more sensitive or more, you know, can cause greater offense and anger than others, mm. right? Yeah, because I mean, okay, even if you look at vulgar words, right? Mm, mm. Like the word fuck. Yeah. Right? It is seen as something you ideally shouldn't say in front of uh, children and yes. younger folk and all. Yes. But there are other words that are more, like, also like, like if if, if the F word is seen as something that is very vulgar mm. and other words are seen as not vulgar, what differentiates it? It's more yeah. the, 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 the use around it and the things the word is loaded with, like, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the word itself, what it means is not as offensive as some other, some other things. Yeah, right? right. But you can say some things, but you can't say that word. Yeah, yeah. So that's where it feels like it's not just based on the definition; it's everything around it, like. Yeah, yeah. And then one thing that I I just noticed in the Straits Times articles that they pointed out that these people also had camouflage paint on their faces. Mm, mm, mm. So when you put that next to the N word, oh, because it's dark colored, uh. I don't know. Oh. But then there's very bad camo that they're doing because it's supposed to be like a few colors, right? Yeah, a few colors. La. <laughs> but then the fact is, they might not be intending that, but when you have like paint on your face okay. that is kind of changing the, your skin color, skin color. Oh, and some parts face. are darker. Oh, man. That's why, <laughs> then I was like, oh my God, this is like the level two one. So these people are even dumber idiots Yeah, yeah. to do that. Like, yeah. if that was your thought process, oh, we're putting paint on our face. Yeah. What other instances have people put paint on their face, regardless of whether they were cancelled or not? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, then it Correct. becomes, then you're like, okay, you're indefensible. Yeah, yeah. But, but what you say about the context is, I think, is important to note, la, yeah. right? And even people who do it for a living, uh, remember the the Indonesian rapper Rich Brian? Mm. Remember his name at one point was yeah. not Rich Brian, it was yeah. Rich Chigger, yeah. right? And obviously, it's a it's a linkage of his Chinese ethnicity with the N word, right? Yeah. And I think after that, he changed. It. I mean, he got big, got popular in the US, and he decided to change his his stage name, And yeah. he actually, I think, if I remember correctly, he issued some kind of like, uh, I was young and I didn't understand the gravity of what I was saying and all that. But now, as I'm older, I know how to blah blah. You know, so it showed. Uh, okay, it's it's yeah. He he understands what context means. Uh, yeah. like if I'm now speaking to a global audience who, and there are people who might not appreciate this name that I've chosen for myself, then I should move on from it, like, right? Yeah. Um, Haven't seen it happen to the Singaporean rapper <laughs> yet. <laughs> He's still out there as Sugar Shea. Yeah. <laughs> Sugar Shea is still Sugar Shea. Sugar Shea. Uh, but maybe when Sugar Shea gets, you know, big. gets big, more global and everything, then he might need to revisit like, hey, should I be calling myself Sugar Shea? Or not? Sugar <laughs> Shea, yeah, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, um, should ask him. I should ask him. Yeah. yeah. So, so it, it's more as when you're, it, if they were just saying it amongst the six of them yeah. in the jungle, who the hell gives a shit, like, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you put it out on social media, wearing a SAF uniform, yeah, with uh, like camo on the face, everything. Yeah. That's right. It's like I don't know whether it was a police report or anything. Probably. Or someone saw the photo like, and then posted it elsewhere. No? Yeah. 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 So, so I don't know, man. It sounds like there's, there's, it's very hard to have any mitigating uh, uh, defenses. La. So curious. So how did it end up with that friend who kept using the N-word at your social gathering? Like, it wasn't a social gathering. It was like a work kind of thing. Work gathering? Is that even no, worse? No, not say work. It was an industry kind of like a meeting. La, okay, meeting. okay. Uh, so then I was like, hmm. Like, I don't know him that well okay, okay. to be like, hey, bro, you know. <laughs> and it was a short meeting that was talking about work. And I was like, 
Then you uh, you fire back with the K word lah. Like, because that's the only word that you can use, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can use it yourself also lah. Yeah, but then it reached a point where like... Like like for me, I would go out, hey, yo, chink, what's up, man? What's yo, up? yo, yo <laughs> chink, my chinks. My chinks in the house, man. And then, and then so then, maybe there's some, then he realizes, oh, maybe I shouldn't be saying this like that lah. Okay la, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe next time I try that. Yeah. Maybe next time I try that. Then everyone will be like, what the hell's going on? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So I, I don't know. Like, it was I don't hear it often anymore. But sometimes yeah. when I hear people do say it, I'm like, uh, really? Yeah. Like uh, regardless of what you think, what I think, that is one of those things that, like, no, like I I I haven't heard that many people argue that the f word is not a vulgar word. Mm. Have you heard it? Like, no, no, no. Right? I think no. everyone is like, okay, like, this is a swear word. Yeah, you don't have if you. Yeah, if you can avoid using it, you yeah, avoid that. Yeah, avoid if you have you know with like older folk or younger folk, you don't use yeah, it. Yeah, don't yeah. use it. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the when it comes to derogatory terms, that's when it feels like is some people can find some way to explain it mm. and why it's not bad. Yeah, which feels a bit weird, lah. It feels a bit weird, lah. And I, I feel like in Singapore, if anything, we you know it's been ingrained in us this whole idea of like you know racial. Uh, I mean, coexisting peacefully, lah, right, with other races, right. I wouldn't say harmony, but I say coexisting peacefully and and being tolerant and everything. Yeah. Um, means that we also don't have to follow how stuff is done in other communities or countries or so, mm-hmm. lah, right. That 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 closely, and then we apply our own understanding of of things to to it, lah. So, I mean, basically, like what you're saying just now, equal representation of derogatory words, like one yeah, person use, yeah. use, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. the CMIO, yeah, 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 all yeah. use. La. Use on your, your yourself, la. use yeah, your yeah, own yeah. derogatory term, <laughs> <la>. own <laughs> it, la. own it. Yeah. But don't go and use someone else's and then insist that, oh, it must work because, you know, they use it so I can use also. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe that's the defense. If someone says a derogatory term, you must yeah. make sure you've got equal representation. Correct, correct. So everyone yeah. then is your own, use, use your own one, yeah, yeah. Uh, derogatory <laughs> term. That's the way to combat it. be like, hi, my name is Terence and my derogatory term is it <laughs> my it's pronoun like, is he him my derogatory term is <laughs> so if you want to use it please yeah use it with my consent you are using it with my consent that's true huh? that could be the new social interaction the new social interaction on LinkedIn and all yeah, yeah. Harish he him Kaling <laughs> <laughs> So everything else is off off limits. Yeah, this, one. this one, but okay. I can say it. Yeah. I can say it. Yeah. Okay, if I use it, you understand. I am killing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, fucking wow. amazing! I think that would be brilliant if Singapore. We are the first ones to do that. Yeah, this is on the IC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are allowed one derogatory. One term. derogatory term. You yeah. have to stick. It's like changing your name and all. Like you oh, want to yeah, change, yeah, you have to go yeah, through yeah. an entire process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And wow. some, some there are only these certain appro- approved derogatory terms yeah, that you are allowed to choose from. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that'd be great, man! Yeah. Another brilliant idea, Singapore government. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man. Interesting. But cool. Can't yeah. see it going any other way, lah. I think they're yes. screwed, man. Yeah. Screwed. Uh, but yeah. So, uh, what is your one shot comment after this very hot and eventful weekend? Uh, my one shot comment was something uh, on Reddit posted mm-hmm. by. Massive address three nine six six. Mm. Uh, no, not not a maybe a new redditor, new podcaster. Sure, uh, but they were saying you know thankful for the podcast. That was the name of the uh, post. Mm. Um, the podcast brings so much insights that it is more than just current affairs. When I was talking to a random Ang Mo, mm. the first thing comes into my mind is you guys. Okay, I have to talk slower because Yalabad mentioned that we need to speak slower. It will be easier for them to understand. Mm. Which mm. is amazing. Even the slightest information or things you share can be learnings that can be applied to our individual lives. Yeah. I'm grateful and thank you Terence and Harish for sharing. Uh, yeah. Uh, never thought like people would take away that as a, as a learning from our podcast. Mm, but mm. if it was helpful for this person in their life and hopefully it didn't come across, they didn't say, okay, I need to talk slower because yeah. you're an Angmo who doesn't understand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. If it improved communication there, then I guess it's great to hear. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a funny, funny comment. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. Mine's also from, mine's from YouTube uh, uh. on our latest, uh, our latest episode about the TikTok ban in the US and Kayatos, whether mm-hmm. Kayatos is Malaysian. Uh, June 4634 says, Hi guys, I'm a senior in my early 70s. I came across your podcast on YouTube and am really enjoying it. I'm a subscriber here and also on TikTok. <laughs> Only bugbear. Lesson the F word. <laughs> <laughs> so very appropriate uh, oh, for our discussion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A senior in her early, uh, her early 70s, I suppose, is... You're not saying that we use the F word too much. Huh? I think I used it like 
five times already this podcast. Yeah, yeah. What's yeah. the what's the name of the commenter? June 4634. June 4634. Uh yeah. Yeah. Uh, no guarantees. Yeah, disappointing our seniors. <laughs> no guarantees. Sh- disappointing our seniors. Yeah, yeah. We see like we see. Yeah. Uh we see. But yeah, what about your one shot thing, man? Uh my one shot thing. Just give me a minute. I'm pulling it up on, sure. on YouTube. Uh, my one shook thing. Oh, wait. Should I go first? Uh, I, I, got it, I got it. I got it. I got it. Oh wait, you go first. You go first. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my one shook thing over the weekend. Uh, my wife actually started watching the morning show. Mm. Uh, oh, the Jennifer Aniston one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I joined her like mid season. Yeah. Because part of me was like, hey, why you start watching the show? You never tell me. Mm. Uh, but then I joined her half season, and I watched the second half, and I actually thought it was uh pretty pretty watchable. Mm. Uh, nice. I had heard good things about it. Yeah. Didn't feel like it was a runaway blockbuster success that you had to watch. Yeah. Uh, but I watched it and like, I. I don't know when or if Jennifer Aniston has ever had that serious a role uh, and being the lead like, in a TV yeah. series. Yeah. Um, I don't know. And like Reese Witherspoon, yeah, her character started off annoying, but over time, good. And Steve Carell, one of my all-time favorite yep. uh, actors, were all in it. Very high production value. And it took on the topic of like, you know, Me Too, sexual harassment, mm-hmm. without coming across as like overly preachy. And I thought it was it was a good watch. Like. Yeah. I know, I think the ratings for the first season was like 62% maybe. Mm-hmm. So not universal acclaim. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I heard good things about it. Uh, I enjoyed it. I, I know there's three seasons. Mm. Uh, I just, we, that was just the first season. La. Okay. So if you have Apple TV, you might want to give it a shot. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's Apple TV. That's yeah. Right. And what about you? Uh, mine was a video that someone posted over the weekend. Uh, it's actually uh, an instructional video from 1988. MRTC 1988, your guide to traveling on the MRT. Mm. So it's an old school video that I think when MRT was first introduced to Singapore, it was probably on TV and everything, trying to teach people how to use the MRT, mm. how to buy a, a ticket, how to you know sit on the train, what to do on the train, and Who things was like that. Presenting it, Samuel Go, is it Samuel? Oh, Samuel, Samuel Go, Samuel Wong, is it from the Pyramid Game back then? Yeah, Samuel. Oh, let me see, Samuel. Uh, some Samuel something la. but yeah basically it's him uh, walking around the MRT and, and basically going through the whole process Samuel of, Chong sorry. Samuel Chong so yeah Samuel Chong. So going through the whole process of topping up your cart and like how to plan your journey and then how to you know wait for the train and then get on the train and get off the train and just explaining the benefits that MRT is bringing to Singapore la. Mm. and it's a pretty awesome watch because like you'd be just shocked at seeing the map of the MRT and like how how barren it used to be like like just like one one snake across the island uh. mm. and then you think about what the MRT is now and like you know, the fact that you can change between interchanges oh that was just east west uh. I don't know not even I think the west the east side wasn't even developed yet so it was like north and, and west that's it oh, is so it? that was how early it was and then like the cost, like the tickets, the machine you could buy only, the most expensive ride was $1.10. Uh. And so they were, you know, teaching people how to put in coins to to buy the machine, and buy it from the machine and all. So yeah, it's just oh. a real blast on the past and the MRT trains and everything, they they looked like completely, you know, barren back in the day. But there's also this sense of like, it was exciting, right? Because, yeah. you know, public transport in Singapore, it was a hotly debated thing. Could we afford it? Could we uh, afford not to have it? And all mm. that. And like you can watch the video and like, yeah, there's this excitement about what public transport can do for for transportation and, and, and the economy like in Singapore. Must have been quite exciting, uh, Like when yeah, you yeah. were living growing up that time. I remember, yeah, I remember as a as a I think I was like in kindergarten. I mean as an adult. La. Oh, as an adult, yeah, yeah, yeah. But even as a kindergarten kid, like I remember sitting at Mati for the first time. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And then my parents brought me and it was like just sit long, just for the fun oh, of I it. I can't remember the first time I go in at Mati. Yeah. Probably oh. your parents had to bring you like. Yeah. yeah. If I was in kindergarten, meant meant that you may have been an infant or something. Uh. Yeah, like infant. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Oh, yeah, toddler, but, toddler, not infant, like toddler. Yeah. But like, if if imagine growing up in, in that time as an adult and all, and it's really... The changes, like, right? Ah, the see? changes, man. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah right? It, it kind of tells me that... I think I, I, I like, my last one shoot thing was some, some basketball thing, right? There was one yeah, statistic yeah. in the video that said, basically the year 1985 when uh, Michael Jordan won Rookie of the Year, Larry Bird won MVP, and Magic Johnson won the NBA Championship. Uh, is 
that that time from between now and then that was thirty six years ago, right? Uh. And if you go back to nineteen eighty five, it was thirty six years since the NBA was founded. So like you know all those black white videos of yeah, men yeah. just running around, and the standard the standards of basketball that improved in that thirty six years, that first thirty six years was so great, right? Yeah. That, but you think about from Michael Jordan's era to now, it's much less improvement. And he's still right? being talked about as the greatest. Yeah, yeah. Of all time, you right? you look at Michael Jackson, uh, Jordan and be like, he can play in today's NBA. Yeah. He's still be awesome. But yeah, it shows you that there's this diminishing returns uh, when it comes yeah. to improving uh, things over time. So you think about yeah, uh, last time MRT being introduced to Singapore versus you know today, or they introduce uh, a new line and everything. The, 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 that marginal improvement or the marginal excitement it brings is much less. La. And because right. also now, you know, with access to information, you can, if there's a new train opening, like this new form of transport, you look at videos yeah. online. Last time, there was nothing, right? Nothing, yeah. So yeah, yeah. all of a sudden, one day you have to go underground yeah, and yeah. take a train. Yeah. So, so that's funny thing. The guy, Samuel Chong was, like, Samuel Chong was like, explaining that. He was like, oh, in some stations are above ground and some are below ground. So you will need to take the stairs to go down. And oh, no, explain. Later maybe, yeah. Uh there was la, but oh, I think it was just such a crazy thing to wow. that you have to go underground, underground to uh. take something. And probably maybe people were scared. I, I don't know like people were And last time afraid. the trains above station, there was no barricade, no? Correct, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember, yeah, yeah. The back train then. Yeah. just comes. Came, yeah, yeah, like. yeah. And you just yeah, la, you risk if you don't don't stand too close, like right, they will say. That was actually quite ridiculous, also. Man. It was, it was, yeah, yeah. The fact that we trusted people <laughs> enough <laughs> to let them not jump on the train tracks. Yeah. Right? Yeah, now yeah, you yeah. imagine a new development. Are you are you crazy? Yeah. That there's no barricade. Correct, but last right. time, yeah, if you if you never got to experience it, you go to a platform. Yeah. It's just the middle, and then the sides are open. Correct. correct you get yeah. the wind in your face. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. magical. It's magical. Uh, yeah. and then the train comes. You feel the gust of, yeah. gust of air. Oh. You don't get it anymore. Like, don't yeah. get it anymore, la. But yeah, it's it's. Oh, yeah. Allah, yeah. That's why the watching the video is is more nostalgic. I mean, it's more interesting than than anything lah. Just watching what wow. Singapore was like back then. Awesome. Uh, cool, man. Cool. Awesome. So that was the first podcast of the week. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, any, if you want, yeah, yeah, if you want to work with us, uh, check out our new website, ministryoffunny.com. dot com. Uh, if anything, can I do just do a quick shout out to to uh people who are are on our Reddit mm. and or maybe you want to come and check out Reddit. Our Reddit actually is a very interesting place now. A lot of mm. people posting different things and having debates amongst themselves. Yeah. And we still go there time to time and and, and join in as well, right? Yeah. And and reply comments and stuff. So yeah, do 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 check out Reddit also, like those of you who who haven't tried it before. Yeah. And if you want to find out more about anything we do or mm-hmm. reach out to us, you can check out our brand new website, ministryoffunny.com. Yeah. All the links are there. Uh, you can just send us a message there and we will get back to you as soon as we can. Yep. Uh, awesome. Thanks for listening, everybody.